righteous, O God, and your judgments are right. study. 
and it's based on the series of the chosen. Because we're having that Bible study on Wednesday the 6th, I'm moving the Music and Worship Committee meeting to the following Wednesday, which would be the 13th, so Music and Worship Committee members uh, will meet on the 13th at 6 o'clock, that is a Wednesday. I'll try to get an email out to you to remind you. We need donations for Operation Christmas Child. If you'd like to, to donate, uh, let me know. Our Veterans Day slideshow will be next week, so I'll try to put uh, whatever remaining slides I have into that show this week, and uh, we will honor our veterans in next Sunday's service. Congregational meeting will be on November 17th, and at that time we'll approve our list of officers and the budget for 2025. Advent material we, we handed out that day too. Wow, a lot of announcements. Any uh, any other announcements that I missed? Anything else happening that uh, we need to let everybody know? I just said one thing. Uh, we will be packing the boxes next Sunday, so if you have any items that you want to pack into the boxes, we will be packing them to the boxes, please bring them next Sunday morning. Drop them off before that. Next Sunday morning, we'll be packing the boxes.
I remember Tanya's father telling me, I'm taking Tanya home with me, but I don't want you because you're not my daughter. All I could feel was heartbreak, but I knew that I had to let her go. After losing Tanya, I didn't think about the future. It didn't matter anymore. I just remember on that day feeling very abandoned. No one cared about me. After about a year at the detention center, I was transferred to an orphanage. Because it felt so empty, I started praying on my own. Without even knowing God, I was crying out to him, asking him to give me a sign that everything was going to be okay, there is a purpose for me. Every night I would pray, and that is when Operation Christmas Child came to our orphanage. And I cried again, I'm so sorry. You're doing you're doing awesome. This is the day that I received my Operation Christmas Child shoe box. Once I opened it, there were so many different things in there. But I remember my favorite item was a yellow yo-yo. To me, that yo-yo represented hope. It was an answer to my prayer. In that moment, I knew that this was the sign that God was sending me. That you are not alone. That you are not an orphan. You are my daughter. And that's what I knew, that God is real. And that he is with me. The orphanage sponsored a choir trip to the United States for two weeks. Because I was on my choir, I had the opportunity to travel to the United States. And during the second week, I was hosted by a family in Virginia. We were in a vet in the morning, and uh, we went to go out to lunch, and Elizabeth and I were falling asleep in the back of the van, and I looked back at Elizabeth, and I heard, this is your daughter. That was supernatural for me. I, it was just, you know, I, I knew was, that the spirit had spoken to me at that point, so I was fortunate enough to take a photo of that. <laughs> I still carry that with me today, when I knew she was my daughter. They sat me down and they asked me if I wanted to be adopted. And I said, yeah, duh. <laughs> of course. They all flew out to Ukraine together to bring me home as a family. And this was the moment right before the plane touched on US soil. And that was the moment that I officially became a US citizen. It was a special moment. After my adoption, I had told my parents about this amazing gift that I had received at the orphanage and how much hope it brought me, what it meant to me, and we decided to pack as a family. My mom said, why don't we pack two shoe boxes, or maybe three, and I said, no, we're gonna pack 100. Over the years as a family, we have packed over 8,000 shoe boxes. Operation Christmas Child is a part of my life, so anywhere I go, I always bring it with me. Starting as a family, packing shoe boxes, going to college and getting people involved there, going to grad school, having my friends at grad school get involved and professors get involved, people at my gym. Anywhere I go, I'm always going to take it with me. It was the first seed that was planted in my heart. The shoebox was a seed. God is great, and God is good, and He is, uh, with that greatness and goodness, He is mighty to save. And our prayer song for today is the song, uh, Mighty to Save, by uh, Hillsong. And it's about uh, God's power to save, His love, and His hope of redemption uh, for us. Um, and with that, uh, the hope of redemption, the good news of Jesus, just like... Uh, we do with these shoe boxes, uh, sending out these kids, um, give them and tell them about the hope of uh, Jesus' redemption in their lives. Um, and that's something that uh, we we get to hear because of, in this country we get to hear that all the time, and thankfully coming here to church. So um, just something to truly remember and keep on your hearts of the, of the good news of Jesus and his 
the mightiness that save us.
kids, got a question for you this morning. If you saw a man wearing a crown and a robe in a castle, what do you think his job would be? King. He would be the king. And what is the king's job? What does the king do? Anybody know what the king's job is? That's right. The king is in charge of a whole country. The king's in charge. Now, I've got uh, another question to ask you. What is a prince? What's a prince? Yeah. Does anybody know what a prince is? Yeah. He's about to be a king. That's right. That's a good answer. The prince is the king's son. And when the king dies, guess what? The prince goes into the king. That's right. Yeah. The prince becomes the king. Now I've got a story to tell you. There was a kingdom that was called Sadland. And in this kingdom, there was a king by the name of King Greedo. <laughs> king Greedo was a bad king. And I'll tell you why he was a bad king. He would make the people in Sadland pay all kinds of money to him so that he could have a great big castle. He could have everything he wanted, and he could have all the food he wanted. And so the people in Sadland were very sad. That's why it's called Sadland. Now, one day, <laughs> Prince Rio died, and his son, Prince Luca, became king. And Prince Good Guy walked out on the balcony and he looked down at the people and he saw that they all had sad, sad faces. And he thought to himself, I wonder why these people are so sad. I don't want the people in my kingdom to be sad. And so what he did was he prayed to God. He said, God, what can I do? The people in my kingdom are so sad. Can you show me what to do? And you know what God said to him? God said, I want you to go out among the people and find out what they say, what makes them so sad. But I don't want you to dress up like a king with a crown and robe. I want you to dress up like everybody else so they don't know that you're the new king. And so he went out among the people and he asked them, why is everybody so sad? And the people said, oh, our old king, King Brito, he, he made us pay all kinds of money to him. We didn't have any money left to pay for our houses. We didn't have any money left to pay for our doctor bills. That's why we're so sad. We hope our new king is a better king, and he has a better kingdom. And so, Prince Good Guy went back, and he took all the extra food that he had, and he brought it out and said, anyone who's hungry, come and get this food for free. And then he said, you don't have to pay all those taxes, all that money to the other cut your taxes way down. I don't need up everything expensive to, to rule this country and cut their taxes. And guess what? The people became happy and they voted to change the name of the land to a new happy name. Did anybody read that? Happy land. They called it happy land. Now, now I've got a very important question to ask. Who is the king of the universe? God and Jesus. God is the king of the universe. And he said, I have a plan to help all the sad people on earth. And just like King Good Guy went down and became one of the people so that he could find out what was wrong, Jesus came down to us and became one of us <laughs> to, to help us and, and show us God's way. So, that's an important thing to know. Jesus is our King. Now, He taught us, He helped us, He healed us, and then He said, I want to fill you with God's love. And that's what Jesus does. He fills us with God's love so that we can love each other and love everybody else in the world is what his kingdom is all about. He said, I want my love for God to be in you so that you can teach and help others. So remember that, kids. Who's our king? Jesus. Jesus and God. That's right. Lord, we thank you for these young ones. What an important lesson that is to learn that, that you love us and care for us and you want to love others through us. 
Be with that now as they go to learn more about you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Caitlin, uh, is going okay at this point, correct? She's still out of the track. Who else would you say? Uh, Gracie Wall. <coughs> Gracie? Yeah. Gracie is playing basketball. Basketball in the group. All right. Yes. Joe, can we add Tim Criswell to this list? Tim Health. Criswell? Yes. Health reasons? Yes. Let's come before the Lord to give in prayer. Well, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've, you've given us. Uh, the seasons are definitely changing. The, the leaves have turned and blowing off, off the trees. And uh, it reminds us that soon uh, the Christmas season will be here. And that's hard to believe. Time goes by so quickly. Help us, Lord, to treasure uh, these days these months as they pass. Help us to, to treasure our relationship with you and our relationship with others. As I was telling these kids this morning how important it, it, it is to allow your love and your, your light and your joy to come through us to others in this world. And, and uh, we want to, to be channels of your love and light. I pray for each and every person here as uh, they are facing the challenges that they're facing, Lord, that you would give them strength that your power would move in their lives and your love would move in their lives, moving them forward along the path of your will, because when we walk that path of your will, things get better, uh, problems get solved, challenges are overcome. Well, we want to lift up these people this morning to you. We pray for Caitlin, and we, we pray that uh, she'll be able to get through this pregnancy and that that, that baby will be healthy, so watch over her. We pray for grace and also with this injury that he has, we pray for healing. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would uh, put your hand of, of uh, healing and life upon him. Lord, uh, Tim Criswell also, we want to lift him up to you and his health. We pray, Lord, that uh, your uh, healing hand would be upon him, watch over him. Lord, we pray for all these people going through with a battle with cancer, so many of them, Lord. We, we pray, Lord, that their treatments would be effective that you would be with them, that you would watch over them, that uh, your healing hand would be upon them. Those who, who are recovered and, and uh, are in remission, sustain their healing, oh Lord, each and every one of them. Lord, we pray for these others and all the problems they're facing. We continue to pray for anyone battling with diabetes, that you would uh, give them uh, uh, your, your strength and, and uh, the meds that they need to get through. We think of Sophia and Colton. And we think of young Luca, who has a heart problem at a very young age, be with him. Be with others, Lord, that we uh, know that, uh, that uh, their health problems is, is a, a challenge. We think of Randy and uh, Patrick's dad. We think of uh, Jack and uh, Dorothy who just had a stroke. Loretta also just had a stroke. Be with them, Lord, and watch over them. Be with these others, Lord, we pray for uh, Bruce and Ron. We lift up Shana and her health problems to you. Young Harrison who uh, recently went through surgery, be with him. Watch over uh, Lisa and, and her healing. Continue to be with uh, Gunner, who's having seizures. Uh, continue to be with Chuck and his heart problem. Watch over uh, these others, Lord, we think of Adam's son, Jack, and all that he's going through. We lift up Olivia and the battle with mus muscular dystrophy. We pray for, for her and the meds that she's on. Be with uh, Trevor and Tori. Continue to be with them and watch over them. Watch over uh, David. We think of uh, Vicki also having heart problems. Continue to be with Janet. Uh, be with uh, Stephanie, who's having both lung and heart problems. Watch over her. We lift up uh, Gary to you and his health problems. Be with Craig, rehabbing his shoulder. Continue to be with uh, Chad, dealing with PTSD. Watch over him. Uh, we think of Renee's uh, father and we lift him up to you. Be with uh, Scott and his health. Watch over uh, Linda and continue to help her through her recovery. Be with Cassie, having heart and lung problems. We think of Brandy uh, having a setback. Lord, we pray, Lord, that uh, you would help her through step by step. Be with Michelle after her surgery. Give, uh, give uh, Doug guidance in his life. Watch over Kim after Kim's fall. 
We have up Sarita to you after her surgery and pray for her healing. Be with Brandy, uh, this emergency surgery Brandy had to have. Watch over her Brandy and his health problems. Lord, we lift up these uh, unspoken requests from several families. We pray that you would help them to, to work through these requests, Cheryl's and James, Debbie's and Patrick's and Mitch's family. Lord, we pray for your guiding light upon their lives. So Lord, we thank you for all these things, and now we uh, pray for uh, this country and all that it's going through. We pray that uh, you would uh, bring uh, uh, about a healing and a unity in this country as these weeks and days pass. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would be with uh, the leaders of the world and all the conflicts that are going on in the world. It, it seems like you know, the world's falling apart. It seems like uh, anything, uh, major wars that erupt at any time besides the ones that are going on. So we pray for peace and we pray for those in the world who uh, love you and sharing the good news of, of uh, your kingdom uh, with others. Be with them and watch over them. Watch over our military people around the world. Keep them safe. Bring them home to their families once their tour of duty is done. Now Lord, we pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time let us honor the Lord with the giving of our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Jacob, 
whose hope is in the Lord is God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. The Lord remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. This ends the Old Testament reading. The New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. Hear the word of God. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second one is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one. And there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from that time on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the Holy Word. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom held deeply within your word in both the Psalms and, and this New Testament reading. We pray for a deeper understanding. Open up our minds, open up our eyes, open up our hearts to what you want to teach us this morning, this morning by your Spirit. For your Spirit is, is our teacher. He brings these words to life in our lives. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. After the Israelites had moved into the promised land, they were moved by judges for many years, but the people began to complain. The nations around them were moved by kings. And so uh, they wanted to be ruled by a, a king. And so God allowed that to happen. The problem is through, throughout Israel's history, once they started to be ruled by kings, they always, always had a king problem. And it started with their first king, King Saul. It wasn't long before he faltered in, in his faith in his trust in God, when bad things would happen, Saul would blame everybody else but himself. Then there was this intense jealousy that he had toward his top commander, David, even to the point where he tried to have David assassinated. Now, David, as, as a young shepherd boy, had been uh, anointed by the prophet Samuel to be the king after Saul, the future king of Israel, and, and the scriptures recognized David as Israel's greatest king, but even David had a multitude of problems. He fell into this adulterous relationship with Bathsheba. Then he had her husband murdered, her husband Uriah. He had a bad temper. And when someone would cross him, sometimes he would just have them executed. He let his power go to his head. And then he had power struggles with his sons who also wanted power. The son that he conceived with Bathsheba, Solomon, became Israel's next king. And he was known as Israel's wisest king. But Solomon fell into the trap of wealth and privilege and power and overtaxing the people. Eventually, he even began to worship other gods. He worshiped the false god of Shemosh and Moloch. 
Then he introduced the worship of other gods to the Israelite people. After Saul, there followed a series of kings that led to a divided kingdom and, and incredibly dark days for Israel and in total destruction eventually. These kings put up this false religious facade to impress the people. But in their hearts, loving God and seeking God's will was not their priority. They were selfish, they were incompetent, they were egotistical. So all of these factors, combined with an economic stress and other failures in the kingdom, led to this division in, in the nation of Israel. The ten northern tribes established their own country known as the uh, nation uh, of Israel. And then the two southern tribes, uh, Judah and Benjamin, established the kingdom of Judah with uh, Jerusalem as its capital. And so these kings from the northern uh, tribe, they established their capital at Samaria. So now we have two kingdoms. There was such a division because of these kings. We now have two nations, the nation of Judah and the nation uh, of Israel. These weak kings up in the north led the people down the wrong road. And because of their bad decisions, because they turned away from God, both of these kingdoms became very vulnerable. In 722 B.C., the Assyrians came in and they totally destroyed this northern kingdom. Never, ever to rise again. Then the Assyrians brought in all of these foreigners into the capital city of, of Samaria. They dispersed the Jews. They wanted to water down the population of the Jews in this city so that they would become the minority so that they could not take over again. And that is why the Jews in the southern kingdom of Judah had such a bias against the Samaritans. You remember the story of the Good Samaritan? That's why they were so biased against the Samaritans, because all of these foreigners had come into Samaria and had corrupted the Jewish faith. But as the decades passed, the southern kingdom of Judah became weaker and weaker because of these corrupted kings. And in 597 B.C., the Babylonians laid siege to Jerusalem and totally destroyed the southern kingdom. There was nothing left. They destroyed the city, the temple, everything. The Babylonians, like the Assyrians, dispersed the Jews throughout the world. They took the important Jews captive back to Babylon. And so these weak and ineffective kings led to Israel.